A poor project handover can derail momentum for straight stakeholders and create costly delays. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a clean, professional handover checklist template in Excel designed for any industry so you can ensure that every project transitions smoothly and with complete confidence in the process. Now, if you do want to save your valuable time, I have made this pre-built, pre-formatted template available for instant download. You'll get all of the activities included in this template as well, along with all of the pre-built formatting. If you are interested in that, there will be a link in the description down below. That being said, let me now walk you through exactly how to create this from scratch if you did want to proceed with that. So the first thing I recommend that you do, open a new workbook and give the sheet a name. So call this something like handover checklist, okay? At which point, what I'd recommend that you do is give your document a title. Now, this is important because if you're sharing this document with other individuals and stakeholders, it just clearly shows them what they have opened or what they've been sent. For you as well, because this is a template, it will enable you to quickly identify what this document is all about. So in B1, I've typed in project handover checklist. I'm gonna put a light gray fill in row one. Now, depending on your preferences or organization's branding, you might want to use different colors. I'm going to also bold this. You can do the same with your font, by the way. I'm gonna leave it as Calibri for now but I'm just gonna increase the font size for project handover checklist in row one, and I'm gonna increase the row height here. The next thing that I recommend that you do is just create a little content area. This way you can leverage the template for different use cases. So for instance, we're going to type in project name in B3 and project manager in B4. I'm gonna put the same light gray fill, and I'm going to put outside borders from B3 through to C4. And that just creates, if I just expand the width of column B, that just it creates this kind of content area for us to enter that information. This is really useful if we take off the grid line. So that's found in view and you'll see here. So it just creates a nice little box. I'm also gonna bold these. And then what I'm gonna recommend that you do is create another little content section. Now you can do this underneath, but I think it works quite well in column E. Essentially, we just want somewhere to document our expected dates, essentially. So the planned work completion date, the actual work completion date, the planned project closeout date, and also the actual project closeout date. Now, what you can do, because we've already created this formatting here, if we click on the home ribbon, and then select B3, click the format painter, left click all of this, and it will just bring all that formatting down. Now I've spent actual wrong, so I'm just gonna correct that. Double left click on here, and then I just need to put some outside borders on, and then we've got this kind of content area as well. Now, what I'm gonna show you now is how to build the template or the table. Now don't worry, I won't be typing in every single activity. What I'll do is I'll copy and paste them in, and then we can just walk through each one so you can get an understanding as to some of the activities you should be doing as part of your project handover. But let us let us now create the main table. So what I'm gonna do is just type in ID. Now what this enables us to do is just give each activity an identification number. So we can refer back to the ID and just ensure that there's no confusion as to the activity. So I've typed in AD into B9. Now I've selected B3, hit Format Painter, and I've brought that in. And we can kind of leverage this for the rest of the table. So I've typed in ID. Then I'm gonna type in activity and then owner, and then I'm going to type in due date. So yeah, here's where we're gonna document the activity we need to do, the owner who is responsible for it, when that activity is due completion. Now this one's optional, but if there's any dependencies, so for instance, it may be that some activities cannot take place until a previous one is done. This will just enable us to specify that. We are then gonna have priority, and we'll set this up as a drop down. We are then going to have task status. Then we're gonna have handover status and then comments, so any additional comments. Now I'm gonna select this cell here, format painter and bring this all across. And then what we can do is we can change some of the, uh, we're gonna change 
column A, I'm gonna make that a bit more narrow, and I'm actually going to uh, just make some of these a little bit bigger. So for instance, let's bring this over like this. So select G through to J, held shift, uh, sorry, I held shift on my keyboard there and selected all of these columns, left click and bring these across. This hasn't come down. Now, the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to, essentially I'm going to select from B9 through to J and we'll go to 30 for now. We might need to add some more. So I've selected all of those. And then what I'm gonna do here is click insert and then I'm gonna click table. Now, what we want to make sure that we do here is select my table has headers because we've already put those in. Press OK and it will create this kind of table effect. Now, the beauty of doing this is when we start adding new rows, it will just kind of automatically apply the formatting and things like that. So in the table name, I'm just gonna change this to uh, handover checklist. That way, if we want to create any kind of uh, reporting or uh, graphs or things like that from this, we can reference the table. So I've, I've done that. And then here, so, so now I've done that. Uh, and then here I'm going to select something that's kind of suitable. Uh, let's go with this one for now. But what I'm actually gonna do is just select all borders and I'm actually gonna put this all in black so we can see it, black font that is. And then, yeah, but we've got the table in place. So now what we need to do is essentially just create a couple of the drop downs and then I'll pause the video and I'll show you the activities. So there's going to be three we're going to set up here. Now I've already set up some. So what you're going to need to do is create a new sheet and call it drop downs. Just rename it. So just double left click in there and type in drop downs. So you'd be doing that as an example, you'd be doing that here. So I'll just call it drop downs two as an example, because we've, I've already got one in here. That's what you essentially be doing. And then in this sheet, you just need to create this. Now I've actually, um, I've missed one. I've missed priority. So what I'm actually gonna do is just do low, medium, high, critical, because they're gonna be our options. So that's what you essentially need to do. Just create this little mapping table. And let me just put that on there and format that. So yeah, just give each one a heading and then just put these, you can pause the video and you can put these uh, options in. So we've got low, medium, high, critical for priority, for task status, not started in progress, complete, needs review, overdue and on hold, and for handover state, status, not handed over, handed over pending acceptance, accepted, rejected, requires revision, partially accepted and not applicable. Now what you essentially need to do is just set up the mapping for each of the required columns. Now the reason why we do this is because you don't have to keep typing out the same text manually, and also it, it ensures that everyone who completes a template uses the right options and they don't just type in their own uh, thing here. So for, let's set up priority first. So the way I recommend doing this is first selecting the entire column, then clicking data, then clicking data validation, data validation. In the allow, change any value to list, left click in source, and then go into your drop down sheet. So left click in here and then left click the options. So for priority, it's gonna be B3, drag all the way down to B6. So this is saying, look in the drop down sheet and put in any cell data within this cell range. Press okay. Now, as you'll see here, we have the drop down for all of the cells in this column, which is fantastic, but we don't really want it in G1 through to G9. So to get rid of those, select those cells, left click data validation, left click da data validation and change allow to any value and then press okay. And what this essentially done is it's removed the drop downs from all of those cells you don't want it, but it's kept it in every single row after. And the beauties of doing it this way is it will go to every row ever created in the sheet. So we've done that for priority. We now just need to replicate the process for task status and handover status. So left click, data validation, data validation. I'll just do this one just to show you how we do it. Um, but uh, I won't do the last one just to save some time. So I've changed allow to list, left clicked in source, and this is going to be this one here. So C3 through to C8, press okay. And then we've got this task status in all of these. And then I'm gonna do this, data validation, data validation and any value. So again, we would just need to do that for handover status, but uh, just to save some time, I won't do that for now. I'm gonna increase the comment uh, column because chances are we're gonna have lots of kind of text been put in here. So we need to kind of indicate that what we want more information. 
And the other thing we could do at this stage is we could set up some conditional formatting if we wanted to, so on the home ribbon. So as an example, we could set up some rules. So anything in the high or critical priority stage kind of appears in red. We could do that on the row level. We could do that just on a particular column. So that's one thing you might want to explore. So you would just create a new rule to do that. So it'd be something like format only cells that contain, um, and then you'd just be doing cell value, uh, specific text as an example, containing critical. And then you could change the kind of format here. We could, you know, there's lots of things you can do. I won't show you that for now, but that's one way you can take this template further. Now, chances are you want to know what activities to conduct as part of a project handover. So if I just go back to the handover checklist, I will quickly show you the ones that I recommend. And now, as I say, these are generic. These can be applied to any project in any industry. The other thing I've done actually is I've just made the handover status a light green color. So you might want to quickly do that actually. That way it just differentiates it as, as more of a, a checklist item. And you can kind of see, you can click, click your, your eyes are kind of drawn to that column. So what I would do something, is something like this. Now, the other thing you can do, if you didn't want uh, a status like this, you could literally have it as a checkbox. So let me quickly show you how to check, uh, to do that. And then I'll show you the activities. So if you wanted to in, in, introduce some checkboxes in here, you first need to enable the developer tab on your ribbon. So you need to make sure this is available. Uh, if it's not, you essentially right, uh, I think you right click up here and click customize the ribbon. And then you look for developer on the left hand side. So I've already brought it across, so it's on the right hand side. But if yours isn't up here, it will be on the left hand side. You find it, so let's just say that was it. Press add and it will appear on the right hand side and then you press okay. And then it's available up here. And then you can insert and then you can use this checkbox and then you literally just draw it in. And then I'm just gonna move this. So look for that little thing, left click, drag that in, right click, edit text, and I'm just gonna hold delete. I don't want anything in there. And then what you can do is if I right click this and then, oh, sorry, select that cell, hover over the bottom right of the cell, left click and drag all the way down and we'll have a checkbox in every single row. So if you did want to do that, and then you've got a checklist, if you like, then you can do that as well. Now, before we finish up, I promised I'd walk through some of the checklist items. So let me just run through some of these. Again, you can pause the video and take a look at these if you wanted to. Are all projects deliverables complete? Now I've created these in order of what you'd like likely go through as part of a handover. So it is almost in a chronological order. Do all deliverables meet the agreed acceptance criteria? Has final stakeholder sign-off been obtained for all deliverables? Has knowledge transfer, documents, processes, walkthroughs been completed? Have all project documents been handed over and stored appropriately, for instance, on the SharePoint or Drive? Has a user manual or operations guide been delivered? Have uh, relevant teams received training or onboarding? Have all open actions, risks and issues been documented and handed over? Has ongoing support ownership been defined and accepted? Have access permissions been revoked or reassigned? Have third party vendor contracts been reviewed or closed out? Have final project finances been reconciled and closed? Has a benefits realization plan been handed over? Have configuration and setup details been documented? Has a final team debrief or lessons learned session been completed? Have post implementation monitoring or support processes been agreed? Has a formal handover meeting been conducted and documented? Has the final project status report been submitted? Have project tools and systems such as Trello, Smartsheet, Asana, etc., been closed down or transferred? And has the project been officially marked as closed in the PMO or governance system? Now, these are the highest leverage 20 activities. Of course, you might want to add more. You can do that as you see fit. You can even change the IDs. But as I say, this is a really good list and one that I recommend that you leverage. So that is how to create a project handover checklist template in Excel, all the recommended columns and also activities. Hope you found this video useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. As I say, if you want to pick up this template, there'll be a link in the description too. With that said, best of luck and hope you have an excellent day.